people be filming you at 5 in the morning? Any luck? <laughs> A little bit. Life is but a walking shadow. So we gon' blow our house to this G's up, freeze up for a second now bounce to this Laid back With my mind on my money and my money on my mind Okay, so as you can see, that sale was well worth uh, the drive down to Sioux Falls. It's kind of like become an annual tradition uh, for Nate, Andy, and I. And we thought we would um, show you a little bit of what we picked up, maybe the top five things we got on this trip. Now, one thing to keep in mind is Nate had to head back to Fargo after Sioux Falls, but Andy and I pushed on down through Sioux City and uh, ended up in Omaha and doing some game hunting there. So we're going to have some other stuff. There's going to be some additional pickups. I'll have an extended video on all of the stuff I got on that trip as well as some additional footage. That'll be on my YouTube channel so you can check that out if you're interested. And Nate will be showing all of his pickups over on his channel, Cartridge Fun. So definitely check for the links in the description below for that. But as far as uh, top five for my weekend, I think I'm gonna go um, with some pretty interesting items. So to get started, it wasn't just games that were 50% off, it was also books and vinyl. And I actually found some used vinyl that I was really excited about. So this is going to take my number five slot. It's not a game at all. But I picked up the Space EP, uh, the Devil Wears Prada. I'm a big Devil Wears Prada fan. Um, this was a completely random find. Usually in used vinyl, you don't find metal like this, especially newer stuff. So I was really pumped to get that. And I'm also a huge punk rock fan, so I picked up this Judge. Um, complete discography. I'm not a real familiar with this band. They were a straight edge hardcore band back in the day. So next up, number four on my list is going to be this awesome 
game keeper for the Nintendo. I'm a huge NES fan, and when I can find weird peripherals like this and accessories that are still in the box, I'm always gonna grab them. I got it at uh, a steal of a deal, I think it was like $10. I couldn't pass it up. Number three is going to be for the NES, but it's not technically an official uh, Nintendo release. This is Sweet Home. It's a Capcom game that released for the Famicom over in Japan. Never got an English translation. Uh, this has been patched and this is a repro copy. I found it in a game store in Sioux City. Um, generally, you know, this has kind of got more recognition in recent years um, in the retro collector scene, I guess, but I've never seen a copy this cheap. It was $25. I've been playing it. It's a fantastic game. It's kind of the first People kind of consider it one of the first um, horror games. So it's very cool. Next up is a game that <clears throat> I didn't expect to find anywhere. Uh, you don't, usually don't find anything for this system. But we, Andy and I found a couple of them, a couple of stores in Omaha that had uh, games for the Panasonic 3DO. And I picked up a copy of Street Fighter II Turbo. Um, this thing is considered one of the best versions of the game. Um, I don't know. If I'll be able to tell the difference, I'm not a huge Street Fighter fan, but I had to pick this up. In fact, I picked it up at an earlier store that was just disc and manual. Um, and then we found it at another store later that day, so we ended up getting two copies. Um, I kept one, Andy's keeping one, but Andy was nice enough to trade me the second copy um, for my collection. So I really appreciate it, and this is an awesome game to add to the 3DO library. And then last up is a game for another system that I just don't find at all. In fact, I got three games for this system, and I'm kind of an enthusiast for it. It's the uh, Jaguar over there. And I picked up a game that I've been looking for forever. Um, this is Trevor McFur in the Crescent Galaxy. This isn't like an ultra rare game or anything, um, but just like all Jaguar stuff, it's very uncommon. And this is one that looks halfway as decent, so it's a space shooter, I think, a horizontal um, scrolling space shooter. Looking forward to giving this one a shot. And I got so there you go. Let's turn this over to Nate and Andy and see what their top five games that they picked up on this trip were. What's going on, guys? That sale was insane. The five things that I am most excited to get. First thing is an NES game, and it is Pirates. So this was a game that I was really hoping to pick up last year uh, at the same sale, and the guy in front of me picked it up. Uh, this is in a very mint condition, very excited to finally have it in my collection. It's not a stellar game, but it is really fun, so happy to have that one in the collection. And then a second game that I was excited about was Rocket Knight Adventures. This is one I've been looking for for a while. Um, I've looked at MGC, thrift stores, pawn shops, and just have never come across this game. I finally picked it up, so I was excited to get that. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to bundle two games together. Uh, Power Rangers, Dino Thunder, and then Mighty Morphin Power Rangers on the Super Nintendo. So these aren't great games. Actually, this one's kind of a fun beat-em-up. But uh, my son was so excited when I brought all the games home from the sale. Uh, these were the first ones he gravitated to. He absolutely loves Power Rangers, so um, this is stuff that he was very excited about, so I was pretty excited to, uh, to bring these ones home. And then, another NES game. Not a great game by any means, but a very unique one, and that's George Foreman's KO. So, it's not a great game, like I said, but what makes this game unique is it is factory sealed, which is pretty impressive. It still has the H seam and everything. It's just something that you never come across. So excited to get this. I think this was like $10 or a little bit cheaper. Um, so that's pretty awesome to find a factory sealed NES game. It's just something you don't see often. And then the last thing that I'm probably most excited about is another NES game, but a very unique one, and it is American Video Entertainment Venice Beach Volleyball. So this is uh, an American video game that you never see, uh, especially in the box. So you can find them occasionally loose, uh, but to find something complete in box, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's very unique, very interesting. Uh, I wasn't planning on picking it up. I'm not a real big box collector, but uh, I saw it, I had to have it. It just looked pretty awesome and just something you don't see often. So those are the five items that I was most excited to pick up. Okay, let's run through my top five from this three-state game hunt road trip sort of thing. Uh, on our way, we stopped at a number of different targets. 
We always check target or clearance games. Usually really good, especially this time of year. Uh, and they were. But uh, my prize out of all the targets ended up being in the toy section. Incorrectly, maybe? Uh, yeah, we were checking the clearance toys and I'll buy its lonesome here was a Pokeball Plus. The uh, Pokeball controller for the new Switch Pokemon game. Uh, yeah, it was all by itself. And I'll, I think most people probably bought this with the bundle. Um, but still, it was $15. Uh, originally $50. So I don't know what the deal was with that. Like, they just wanted to get rid of it. Who knows? It was in the wrong spot anyway. But... What a pickup. Uh, I was looking forward to uh, playing this game with my son. We have quite a bit, um, and this is just going to make it all that much better. Next up, down in Omaha, there's a store that we always like to check out called Ben's Game Zone. And if you're ever in the Nebraska area and you get to Omaha, check that place out. They have a number of uh, obscure stuff and a lot of it. It's a very big uh, store, and when we got there, we just so happened to get in when a bunch of boxed NES titles showed up in the store. And some of them I passed up, and some of them I couldn't because, I mean, you don't see these around in the condition like they are. Uh, so, we got Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Pool of Radiance, complete in the box. We got Wizardry, second one, complete in the box. We got Ultima, Quest of the Avatar, which is, you know, pretty, probably the most common Ultima game. And then you got one of the rarer ones, Ultima Warriors of Destiny. Um, all of these were, you know, $50, $60, somewhere in there. But again, you don't see these in this condition. Um, some of them you don't see at all, just the cartridge. So... I was very happy to pick those up. So counting down, we're on to number three, Dio. I say that because I got a bunch of 3DO games. Isn't that crazy? Anyway, 3DO games uh, don't turn up too often. The ones you do see are always like, oh, Twisted the Game Show. Like, everybody has that one. Um, so I'm looking for the more obscure, the more uh, rarish stuff. Um, and really, 3DO isn't a great system. It's okay. There's some good games on it for sure. Uh, but for FMV and kind of bad acting and weird games, man, it's a treasure trove. And uh, between Ben's Game Zone, like I was just talking about, and another store, Pop Culture Exchange in Omaha, definitely need to check that out as well if you're in town. Uh, I got Kingdom The Far Reaches. Return Fire, which is a really good strategy game. Uh, Psychic De Detective. Man, there's some good FMV in there. Syndicate. Good version of that, I think. Uh, Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Slayer. Don't know much about it. Um, Jurassic Park Interactive, which, man, it's kind of special. And finally, Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Uh, a very good version of Super Street Fighter 2. Um, and <laughs> we ended up picking two copies of that up on this trip. Um, one of them I got later. Ryan, uh, Ryan ended up finding this one. Um, he picked that up and he's like, well, I never see this game. I need that. Okay. Makes sense. We go to the next one, the Pop Culture Exchange. They also have it. This, But they have the jewel case with the manual and everything. A lot nicer. I said, sure, I'll trade you. I bought that one. We traded. He got the nicer version, or he got the nicer copy. Um, but, man, we're both going to practice our Street Fighter 2 on uh, 3DO. And us too, man, we're going to be world champs just on that system. And number two is a game that I... <laughs> never come across uh if you go to game stores 
you will never find these type of games. It just doesn't happen. There's there's a few out there, I know, but uh, these are pretty much eBay only, or maybe sometimes at a con you'll see these. But I got a Neo Geo AES game. It's Magician Lord. Very common game, uh, but it's one I didn't have. I only have <laughs> like two or three now. This is my third one. And uh, this was at Pop, Cu Pop Culture Exchange in Omaha, Nebraska. And yeah, they had a decent price on it. It's nothing crazy, but it's, you know, something that you can pick up, look at, and say, oh, this is a, you know, a real AES game compared to uh, the ones on eBay. This is, uh, can't go wrong doing it like that. So I had to pick it up. And finally, my number one pickup from this road trip is something that I've been after for a very long time. Uh, it's probably been more than a decade, actually, and honestly, I've probably seen it cheaper in the past decade or so, but I held off, wanted a good deal. I wanted to add a garage sale, find the garage sale, fine. Never did. Can't find it. Won't find it, probably. Um, and that is an Atari Jaguar system. Uh, this is kind of the last major console that I need. I have pretty much everything else. Um, once you start talking maybe like a CDI, kind of a fringe system, um, other than that, I have almost everything that you would ever want. And uh, I'm just finally happy to have a Jaguar, finally. Said the second person ever. Um, and that the first person was obviously Ryan. He is a big Jaguar fanatic. He's a big collector. Um, I don't know if you've seen the, his pickups yet or not, but they're good. Anyway, yeah, I'm very excited to hook this up, play some Jaguar games, um, and then probably be thoroughly disappointed in the quality of Jaguar games and the Jaguar system itself. Nonetheless, it's something that, I mean, a collector that collects pretty much everything, you have to have it at some point. And we got this in Sioux City at a place called De Wolf's. Um, a very cool place. He's got a lot of cool, crazy stuff, too, as well. Um, he's been around for quite a while. And definitely suggest uh, checking them out in Sioux City, Iowa. And, yeah. He had it for $150. That's about as good as you're going to get nowadays for a Jaguar. Um, maybe a little bit cheaper at a con, maybe. But uh, I'd like to... You know, I trust this guy much more than, you know, some random guy at a con, which you might not never see again. So, yeah, what a trip. I got a ton of other games. None of these games were even from the Last Stop CD shop. The whole reason we went on this trip to begin with, which is funny, I did get a lot at those stores at 50% off. But these were definitely cream of the crop stuff. Uh, stuff you don't find an area that I live. So when you're traveling, you have to take advantage of getting to these stores, seeing what they have, and picking these things up. And man, what a good haul. 